So hello everyone, welcome to Wisconnect, Connect, connecting you with the art of data visualization and storytelling. So my name is Sagar Kapoor. I'm part of customer success team at Tableau. So Wisconnect is a weekly global Tableau community call in which we help you to connect with the art of data visualization and storytelling. It was started with one of the Tableau ambassador in India, Devya Bharti, in 2019. So we have our YouTube channel by the name of Wisconnect. Go ahead, subscribe to it. Some great content waiting for you. We have a LinkedIn group. Go ahead, connect with each other and learn from each other. And follow the hashtag Wisconnect on Twitter to get updated about all the latest sessions with respect to Wisconnect. With that, let me go ahead and introduce our speaker for today. So Carl is a Tableau Zen master, ambassador, the other head coach at Information Lab, co-founder of Prepping Data and author of Tableau Prep Up and Running. He has the luxury of working with some of the best users in the world and the software to help empower others to, to be able to develop skills that would be seemingly out of reach. To promote practicing data prep skills, he and his team have created a prepping data challenge every week to go ahead and help you to prepare data. So with that, I will hand it over to Carl, who will talk about who is Tableau Prep for and why it could be part of the next data revolution. Carl, over to you. Thank you, Sagar. Yeah, no, that, that's um, a lovely introduction. Uh, I th think, yeah, there we go, I can share now. Um, so hello, everybody, and, and thank you for having me. When when kind of the team originally reached out, I was a little bit nervous to be like, oh, am I, am I the right guy for, for this group? So I know that you love talking about storytelling, about that data visualization piece. And what I'm going to go through in the talk today is going to be relevant for that, absolutely. And actually, what I've been lucky enough in my career, you just went through the list of the things that I get up to. But that obviously doesn't happen when you just kind of start out in this space. It builds over time and you get involved in, in the community in different ways and, and join in, in in kind of different opportunities that you can find over time. But really, I remember back to those days where I was running a, a BI team in the UK across three different cities. I spent a lot of time on trains going around and what felt like circles most of the time. But my team was very much back in that space where they were provided with a SQL extract. They would work with it in Excel and they would then go and produce the visuals still within Excel and then put that into PowerPoint. And I remember coming across Tableau, uh, it was version 5.2 back then, I downloaded Tableau Public. And it felt like a complete game changer because it had that ability to do storytelling, to have the ability to go and visualize data, but it was all about you doing it rather than you know my small centralized team or um, kind of just the IT teams, you know, it, it really did open the door to lots of people having that opportunity to go and visualize the data themselves, go and answer their own questions. And, and really where I kind of kicked on with Tableau was at Barclays where there was a team of three of us, Pete Jokes, former Tableau Zen master, Lee Mooney used to be head of analytics at Man City after he left Barclays and, and myself supporting 130,000 colleagues. And anyone who works in a large organization, you know it's kind of impossible to look after everything that you need to look after and understand everybody else's jobs. Um, you certainly wouldn't have the ability to do that um, for, for that size of thing. I, you know, I'm not um, silly enough. Sorry, just forgot to send off notifications, which is terrible of me. Um, wouldn't have the opportunity to kind of go and do that and understand anybody else's job better than I really understood my own. So 130,000 people, it's not gonna happen. Which is really where I got excited by Tableau even more because it really did open the door to people answering their own questions. They know their subject, they know what they're doing, they can go and roll with that. And when I saw Tableau Prep came along, I started to realize that it was very similar. We didn't just have this um, setup where all of a sudden it was just, um, we were stuck, we were waiting for data. Again, if you work in any kind of sized organization, you've probably felt that annoyance if you don't have access to your databases or your data sources yourself. I can't work any faster than somebody providing the data source for me. So quite often I think of the question, I then ask the question, I then wait for it. And it takes a while to come back. But with Tableau Prep, it's changing that dynamic. In the same way that Tableau Desktop changed the dynamic and people could ask and answer their own questions, we're seeing the same happen within prep. 
So I, I want us to take the time just to step back and say, well, actually, who is PrEP for? As well as who PrEP isn't for. And actually, let's go and think about how PrEP could be part of this next data revolution, just in the same way the Tableau desktop was for just visualization. So if I can make my slides work. Oh, it's all going technically well today. I'm going to take a step back just in case you haven't spent time with Tableau PrEP and say, well, what actually is Tableau PrEP? What do we mean by it? I'll talk a little bit more about self-service data preparation, but then we'll get into why you should be thinking about using Tableau PrEP, but also why not? And then we'll dive into who should be using PrEP. So not just why use it and why not, but who should be using it, but also who PrEP isn't perfect for as well. There's a lot of different ETL tools, so extract, transform, and load tools out there. Um, so let's go and kind of think about who might be using what tool and why, because that's also a classic challenge that we have in most organizations is making sure the right people are using the right tools. And then last but not least, I'll, I'll dive into how to get started. So who's this? I, I don't mean the little furry quokka. If anyone um, hasn't come across quokka before, I highly recommend Googling quokka and the word selfie. And you will get a whole load of amazing content where these little marsupials that mostly in Western Australia on a little island called Rotness, just off the west coast of Perth, um, you will you will find these little fellas. They are adorable. They're almost like little mini kangaroos. Um, and O'Reilly doesn't normally let you choose your animal on the cover, but when I sent a whole load of cute pictures of quokkas, then um, my content editor helped me out. So Angela made the request, and I, I got to use a quokka. What I meant by who this was me, Carl. Um, so as Sagar said earlier, it's I am the other head coach at the data school in the UK. So that's the the training program that we have for four months before the team go out and do four six month placements at lots of the big information lab clients and, and others. Um, and it's kind of an amazing place to work. So working alongside Andy, the rest of the Zens and the Ultra Aces that were created over the years, um, it's absolutely phenomenal just to kind of go in and be mentally challenged every day, teaching different people in lots of different ways. So I absolutely love it as a job. They also let me have uh, Tom Brown as the founder, lets me have kind of the space to go and kind of do these crazy projects like writing the book or, or running with prep and data, et cetera. So I, I know I am fully lucky with the, the job that I have. As I said previously, I, I was an experienced BI manager, both a, a large insurer as, as well as the bank. And then um, I did four years of consulting before I got stuck in to the, the other head coaching roles. So that's working alongside Andy Creeble every single day. So that's fun. It, it's a great job and it's kind of given me this opportunity to, to work both in terms of the visualization side of the world, as well as that data preparation role role to go and really power the analysis that we're doing and empower and teach a whole load of other people. That kind of led uh, my work with PrEP, I think, really to that Zen um, role, award, I don't know whatever to call it, um, but but landing that Zen master title this year, which was a huge surprise. I've, I've been using Tableau very heavily pretty much every day since 2012. Never thought it would be me. You know, you look at the Zens and what they create, and it's just absolutely phenomenal, whether it's Adam McCann creating a, a new crazy way of doing something, or Mark Reed, who went through the data school, exploring those visualizations in different ways, or Lorna Brown doing some kind of crazy speed tips with Ann Jackson that you've just got no idea that that was even possible within the tool. So a huge, huge honor um, within that. And yeah, uh, like everybody else, I probably don't feel worthy of it, uh, if I'm being honest. But where that prep work did lead to was me writing the book, Tableau Prep on, Up and Running, which is aimed at people who have done a bit of data prep, but you know, I've also tried to write it for those who haven't done any data preparation before, trying to take those skills from zero to a kind of a good high intermediate level um, in the tool as it stands at the moment. So yeah, that's that book is out with O'Reilly now um, and it's kind of growing a little bit as the tool grows. So it's quite, quite interesting that they kind of be, seem to be tied together, of course. Uh, I will, am also in the process of writing a second book, this time about visualization. So maybe I'll come back and do a, a session about that um, further down the way as I get closer to finishing that. But you're not here to listen to, to me, just talk about me, because that would be very dull for you all. So let's go and talk about our main character in this story, which is Tableau Prep. And by Tableau Prep, we actually mean two different tools. We mean Tableau Prep Builder and Tableau Prep Conductor. 
So if you haven't had a chance to use it yet, Tableau Prep Builder comes as part of the creator license. So where you get a, a seat on server, whether that's server or online, you get Tableau Desktop and you also get Prep Builder. So it's a tool very much like Tableau Desktop that sits on your machine. I'm gonna go and connect it to data, do the work I need to do with it, and then maybe publish those data sets up to server. Sounds like Tableau Desktop, very different task. We're really often, preparing data sets for other people's analysis or our own to make that analysis much easier and much richer by pulling different data sets together. Prep Conductor takes all of that rich logic and goes and turns that into something that is scheduled, but also available for others to go and work with and edit as well, as of this latest or the release of 2020.4, 20, so at the end of last year. Prep as a tool was only originally released in April 2018, and this is that moment where kind of we push the brakes a little bit because it is a really great tool that has lowered the barrier to entry. For lots of people come back to that idea in a minute, but it is also a tool that's rapidly developing. It's the only Tableau tool that has a monthly release where we're getting new features each time, and that is huge kind of applause to Zahira Meraki, formerly Rahim, who was leading that Prep team who have done amazing jobs, uh, kind of just creating fantastic content and, and the rest of the dev team, I, I could list them all off. There's, there's huge benefits that have been landed um, on a monthly basis that's coming out. That's one of the reasons why we created Prepping Data as a challenge was actually so we can keep up with it all ourselves, um, keep ahead of those new features and functions and go and try those before we have to go and use those in the workplace. But really the prep tool is aimed at that kind of part of the job that if I'm honest, nobody loves. It's that kind of reshaping data, cleaning different data points, pulling different stuff together every single day, week or month. So people have got the latest data to work with. They're trying to answer their questions on that richest, latest data set possible. Um, Prep is helping us do that. We go and build the logic once, as you kind of see on the right hand side of the screen, I'm just kind of taking a little small shot of one of my flows. And we're just kind of piling those tools together to do some kind of different levels of things, whether that's changing the granularity of the data through the aggregation step down at the bottom here, or actually cleaning up the data set, adding in calculations. So I don't need my users to have to know how to do some quite complex calcs in Tableau, desktop when they're using it or on the server through web edit, I can do that in prep so that makes their, their life easier or even joint. You know, lots of people struggle with that join logic if they've not had to do it before or even some complex joints you can do in prep really kind of opens up the doors brilliantly. So having that opportunity uh, to use the tool to go and simplify the users of your data sets and your analysis is really powerful. Making that repeatable, so I don't have to go and do that every week as lots of my team back in the insurer did, um, saves everybody time and just allows us to go and work on the stuff that we can go and work on, go and stretch our capability and skills further, which is a much more richly rewarding job. But also what prep is, is taking Tableau's visual nature, that drag and drop behavior, uh, right click, let's go and see the other options that we have. It's taken that user focus and applied it to this data preparation task. It's really interesting the way and some of the features that it just feels like a friend that you already know when you start using the tool, if you've used desktop for a while, calculations look and feel exactly the same. The concept of level of detail calculations and ranking is already within prep. Uh, lots of the join behavior looks and feels similar. It's really quite neat that if you've used Tableau Desktop, prep will feel very easy to get going with. But that opens the door to self-service data preparation, because even, even as a Tableau user, I was restricted for what I could do by the data sources that I could go and get. Now, at the bank, I was very lucky. I, I taught myself SQL, basically locked myself in a dark room for a few days to go and teach myself SQL up to an okay level to go and pull some of the data sets that I was struggling to get hold of otherwise. Because at the end of the day, we know data is everywhere. Data is horribly messy. It's not always ready for analysis. So having that chance to go and pull all of that together and go and build um, the data sets for the way that we want it is perfect. I can go and think of questions. I can go and start pulling this stuff together rather than having to go and do that piece I mentioned earlier, asking other people to go and do that for me, then you know, joining that work queue and, and waiting for those requests to come out. So in very much in the same way that Tableau changed visualization and analysis, 
with desktop, that's what we're seeing with prep two. And allowing those users to answer their current questions, but also formulate those next and go through that process is really key. But we shouldn't do that in a completely uncontrolled way, don't get me wrong. Lots of you will be, I'm sure, involved with making sure that data sources are authentic, that we're working off the right data source for the right use case and the right situation and making sure that mistakes don't creep into the data sets that we're actually basing our analysis on. You do need some controls around that, but letting people go and explore and having that safe place to go and understand what they can do and also what they need to do for their analysis is super powerful. And really, Tableau Prep has lowered that barrier to entry more than any other tool out there to let people go and start to do this themselves. So when they does go to production or they want kind of support with harder challenges, they can turn their screen around and it's really easy to understand what they're trying to do and why. So how do people really start prepping data? This has been quite a challenge. And, and when I've been teaching at the data school, but also the public for years, I've, I've taught Ultrix for a number of years as well. It's quite a jump for people to kind of go from, maybe they've just been using Excel as a data set, or even if they've been using column-based column, column -based data stores as well, it's quite a jump to go, oh, so data, what am I thinking of as granularity? Lots of things that depending on your data skills, you might take for granted, if you haven't been exposed to this stuff, it's really hard. It's really hard to do this. So the first thing that I always try to do and get people to think through are what are some of those steps that we do with data? What options do you have, basically? So whether that's changing the shape of data, whether that's cleaning up road data items, or even just pulling different data sets together, you've got to kind of go and line that up. But also line that up in terms of what you can do within your organization and your environment. Maybe you're doing this at home, it gives us a lot more freedom. But if this is within work, you're going to have certain controls that are going to go and limit you for what you're able to do. But most importantly, I think the biggest thing that I don't see people do when they're learning data prep, especially for the first time as you're learning as a skill, just like we've done with visualization and as we improve with visualization, is actually go and build that plan. It's very difficult when taking that step back, worked out what you're trying to do to actually go and make those right steps. So at this point, rather than just talking about prep, I thought I'd just kind of introduce the little concept from my book around how do I talk about planning and prep and just kind of simplifying that off a little bit, just in case you are newer to this, or if you just have found that you've got some struggles with data prep, hopefully this little bit is useful and then we'll dive back into to who prep is really for and, and why you should be using it. So my first step of planning is really getting to know your data. And even if you're not preparing your data set, this is, <laughs> this is really useful for, for use in Tableau desktop as well, especially when we think of things like level of detail calculations. Mostly I see people struggle with level of detail calculations because they don't know the level of detail of their data set. We set that in desktop by what discrete fields we have, the blue fields on the screen. But we also, that's kind of controlled by what the level of granularity is of our raw data. So actually taking a understanding what your data set has and what it looks like is really important. So here we've just got this little basic data set. It's from one of our prep and data challenges, so different branches. We run a fake soap company. We run a fake airline now as well, but a fake soap company called Chin and Beard Suds Co. Jonathan has a big beard. My surname's all Chin. It kind of writes itself. We're cleaning data, so hence the, the soap. But really what we're doing with this kind of fake company is just kind of taking the data sets that we see in the real world and turning it into something as a challenge that can go and teach people how to go and make their data better. But this first step is looking at this kind of structure of data and going, all right, so what have we actually got? And one of the leaps I made in my own head of when, I, when I've been teaching is realizing what I do when I go and look at a data set, but I actually tableauize it in, in many different ways. I go and look at what uh, discrete fields we have. So what categorical uh, data fields have we got? So here we've got branch and product, nice and clear. We've got some string fields. That's gonna break down the measures within my view. That's kind of there. Looks like we need to do with some cleaning um, at this first glance. But I also see I've got dates running across the headers of my columns for my values. We know within Tableau that if I've got a single date column, if I right click drag that into my view, I can go and cut and slice those dates in loads of different ways that I still love to this day after spending hours of my time encoding date parts within SQL. So we need that to be a single column. So I'm starting to kind of work out this structure 
and all of my values are kind of hidden. I don't really know what those values are yet. We don't have a, a name for them. So we're thinking about that structure of the data, but also those data types and how they're going to start to affect our analysis within desktop. So we go from really understanding that input to jumping to what do we want that output to be? So our second step is working out what our desired state is. What do we want this data to be like? What's the output? Again, just sketching out the structure really helps us thinking what data types we're going to need to have, thinking about the type of values that we expect to see within those columns. Is it what we have in that input? Don't have to note down everything, but just noting down some of those kind of key examples and starting to note down what you're spotting within the data set helps you prepare what you're actually going to do. Because in our third step, we work out how to go from that know your data input all the way through to that desired state. And we go and simplify the process because we just work out the different bits that we need to do again, sketch it out, just like we would do a dashboard. You know, that analogy of the analysis is so much easier to do when I kind of sketch out that initial idea. Even if I change it along the way, we've at least thought about where we're going with this. Data preparation is no different. If we've got that kind of list of changes that we're going to try and work against, that's great. And this is the normal point where someone goes, yeah, oh, hang on a second, Carl, because if you don't really know how to prepare your data, having this list of changes is, is okay, but how are you going to go about doing it? Well, that becomes your list of what you're going to go and learn. I'm sure like all of you, uh, the amount of blog posts and videos and, and help and support that's out there for the Tableau community is just phenomenal. So Googling Tableau prep and the thing that you're trying to do, you're going to start getting those responses back. That's going to go and help you learn how to do that. Some of those steps you'll learn how to do. As you get more experience, you'll know more of them. But almost having that plan will help you do it because step four is actually going and building it. Like prep is a beautiful interactive tool. I can go and change the order of things as I go and build uh, changes in my clean steps. So this kind of like flat bar where we see lots of the different icons. So those different tasks that we're doing within that step. We can go and change the order of those things. So I don't have to get it right first time, but by breaking that challenge down into smaller steps, it becomes a lot easier. It almost allows me to go and try different techniques and do that quick iteration without having to plan it all perfectly up ahead. Because if you're new to the tool, yeah, you're not gonna be able to do that. Hey, I've been doing this stuff for years. We've, we've done 102 weeks of prepping data now. Um, which is insane in its own right. And I've been doing this kind of work for about 10 years and it's really hard to get right first time. So you, you shouldn't have to. You've got to have a tool that allows you to go and, and flow and iterate with that. And for many people, that isn't coding. That isn't Python and R and, and SQL. If you've got those skills, great. But even still taking that step back and going through this planning process is useful. But working with a preparation BI tool that, that's like prep, it's very easy to go and kind of just work your way through from there. By the way, team, if you've got any questions, throw them in the Q&A and I, I will kind of cycle back through those Q&A. At the end, we've got, we've got time to do that. So keep chucking those questions in and I will come back to them. So I'm starting to talk about why we should do data prep. Now let's go and focus on why Tableau prep. Well, at the end of the day, it's built for that thing that I've just spoken about. All of those planning steps of what I've always done in whatever tool I've been using, whether that's SQL, whether that's doing it manually in Excel, yes, we've all been there, right? Or whether that's doing that with that work within Ultrix. They're the steps that I go through. I'm just finding that I can do lots of that work really quickly and also hand it over to others in Tableau Prep. It's built for that purpose. It's built for that self-service purpose. Like I say, it's lowered that barrier to entry to enable people to do this a lot more easily. I won't say preps code free because we're still using calculations just like we do within desktop. So it's code light is the, is the phrase I use for it. But that drag and drop nature of this data prep work rather than having to code it is really strong, really beneficial and useful. But there's a few more subtle tweaks along the way that's actually even more beneficial than that. For example, I've seen a little abstract from the profile pane, the piece that sits in the middle of your screen as you go and work through your flow from left to right of your data, from your input to your output. Yeah, it's profile pane in the middle of lots of the different steps where we're seeing our data. You know, Tableau's mission is to help us see and understand our data. Well, Tableau Prep's doing that. We see this histogram. So the gray bars behind the different values that we see in our month column, 
we can see that we actually don't have as many rows for March 2019 as we do for January and February. It's also we can see that we're missing a chunk for England if we expect to get the same number of rows for each of our different countries. It helps me understand where we've got issues. It can help me understand what that data set's missing. In the bank, I had hundreds of thousands of tables to use, which obviously they weren't all documented. The kind of visualizations I was doing to understand that data were these histograms in Tableau. It's just Tableau's now gone and built that for me. So that huge amount of time in actually doing this kind of style of, of preparation and working with the data. Seeing data, we know the benefits of it. You're here talking about storytelling, data visualization. You know the power of visualization. Introducing that into the preparation phase is absolutely huge. Because also what I've found by using prep is sometimes I answer the questions and we don't always need to build a dashboard. We can actually answer questions in a really rich way by going, look, I've just seen this. Have you seen this? Do you understand this? And actually showing that within prep has been really beneficial. I've mentioned the iteration piece, so I won't kind of go back over that, but it's very quick and easy to make changes and then see when you're making those mistakes because of the visualization part of the tool. And we've got that rapid development cycle through the tool, those monthly releases to kind of keep getting a better, richer experience as we go through. But why might you not want to use prep? Um, just I'm not going to hide away from that. It's as much as we say that Tableau desktop is really easy to use, it still takes some training. I, I don't know anybody who's picked up Tableau. Well, I know very few people. It's because they've used lots of the other BI tools that were out there before that picked up Tableau and just started dragging and dropping and built the perfect chart and the perfect analysis. No, no, it takes training. We've all been to tableau.com forward slash learn and start watching the Tableau videos. Perhaps got a whole load of videos up there as well, by the way. But we're, we've got to go and learn our skills from somewhere. Data preparation is fundamentally a different skill from data visualization. Whenever we talk about Tableau, we don't just talk when, even if we think about desktop, we've got to go and learn how to manipulate data to get it ready for analysis. We've got to think about that user interface and user experience at the end of our dashboards to make sure our users are getting out what they want, let alone the analysis, the calculations, everything that kind of fits in that skills that we refer to and that's needed within Tableau Desktop, prep kind of takes that spectrum even further back. How do we go and connect to some of those data sources that are so much harder? How do we go and do that cleaning, the joins, the unions to go and pull different and sporadic data sets together in the first place? It is a new skill set. It does take time and it does take some training. If you're just going to leave Tableau prep, uh, whether that's builder or conductor, with somebody to run without training, that's going to be a hard job. Don't do that. Give them give them that little bit of space for training and chance to play and explore. Um, again, it's why prepping data is there to allow people to do that. Also, we'll see a proliferation of data sources. It, it can't not. As people go and learn and try and play and develop, you're going to get more data sources out in your business. You've got to think of a way to handle that. That's not a bad thing. Just in the same way that having different views and different pieces of analysis out in your organization isn't a bad thing if you're talking about them in the right way. Different cuts, those different views of data is really useful. I will never forget sitting next to Craig Bugworth, so my, my now colleague, um, at a Tableau conference in London, I think it was 20, 2012 or 2013, maybe 2012. And he was doing some social media analysis on Twitter. And it was one of the moments where Tableau just clicked for me and went, oh, wow, OK. Not because I didn't love the tool and was using it already for a long time before, but because it was how he was using the tool. He sat there and he built 10 different charts. And then he looked at those 10 different charts and went, that one, that one, that one tells the story. And then he put them together on the dashboard. You know, the, it, those other charts that were still out there. He just chose how to go and form his dashboard from there. That's not a bad thing. That's called good analysis. So actually, when we're preparing data sets, we're going to go and create a few different data sets along the way. We're going to have different reasons to use different things. We can go and tie these things back together and still have those golden sources, but we're going to go and see a little bit of growth of that. Be prepared for that. It's not really a reason not to use Tableau Prep, but it is a reason why we just might just want to be a bit cautious when doing so. But also, Preps is still a growing and developing tool. 
we're, we're going to take some of those time to, to go and build the functions that, that everybody wants for the, for me, multi-row formulas, so working across different rows in our data set. So one of those bits that are missing, connecting directly to an API in a really easy way to do that. You know, these are the requests that um, I keep talking to the prep team about. They keep listening to me. They keep dropping in some of the things that I want. Um, but strangely, it's not all about me. Who would have thought that? You know, I know, I don't know either. But having that chance to kind of go and feed in those ideas, the dev team wants to hear that. You know, go and add those ideas to the community forums in the ideas forum. And that's really where we're going to go and drive this tool forward as well. So if you're not using prep because prep doesn't do something, go and share that idea. Let's go and get the votes for it. And then the, the dev team will answer that pretty quickly. So that's the kind of overall reasons of why we should and maybe why we're not using the tool. But who? Who within the organization should really be using the tool? Well, number one, reporting analysts. Those desktop users, all of us, right? And kind of that's pretty much everybody in the organization now, I hope. Um, but certainly the people who are spending a lot of their time during the day building different analytical outputs. Not every analyst can use SQL, Python, R, you know, the list is kind of endless these days. That's okay. That doesn't make you worse at your job. You can still be a great analyst, even if you don't have the skills to go and work with some of those data sources. That's okay. Prep steps into that space. We can go and connect to data sources and anything that we can connect to in prep, we can go and prepare for that. So really what prep becomes is, is a way where somebody doesn't have to go kind of knee deep into the coding space to be able to go and get the data there as you want. They can create rich analysis that's in their heads, but in a way that's uh, much easier to get hold of. The profile pane, as I mentioned before, and, and seeing visual joins stops us making terrible errors. It's sometimes hard when you're doing some deep analysis of your data and or kind of heavy reporting to kind of miss errors if you're not the expert in that business line. But seeing each data point profiled or seeing each data field, sorry, profiled in, in the profile pane and seeing what's going in and out of a join in terms of the number of rows and the values that are being kicked out is super useful and, and stops me making errors, even though, again, I've been doing this stuff for years. Maybe I need to get better. I definitely do. But also it's that kind of that turning the screen around at the end after you've done the piece of work and kind of talking to a colleague about how they can then go and productionize it or hand it over to them. We're seeing a flow being this recorded document of the process and changes that are going on throughout. That is useful. That's, that's hugely useful for bringing people together and collaborating more closely together. And that's where we, again, get richer data work in an organization. Also market researchers. So I've, I've worked alongside a number of market researchers over the years where data hasn't been their strongest point. You know, the way that they view the world, the way they think about human behavior, the way they conduct a survey is really kind of their core skills. Some obviously can use data on, on typecasting to, a, to an element here, but actually whether you're good at using data or not, survey data is never in the format you want it. However you design that survey, unless you're really thinking of the exact thing you're gonna visualize, it's never in the form you want. You're gonna to wanna to change those questions from being one question per column into one question per row, and you probably actually want it in both stages and both states as you go through and do your analysis. So having a tool like Tableau Prep is easy to teach people how to use to go and do those pivots or change those levels of aggregation. But also, whenever I've worked alongside market researchers, I see just the plethora of data sources that are thrown at them every single day from different third parties, even from inside our organizations. To be able to go and draw those data sources together is, is a constant challenge. And again, PrEP is absolutely there to help out in an easy to use way. And also that kind of drag and drop nature, one, it's easy to use, but it's also that repeatability. I can go and build a flow once, and then I just have to press that little play icon and it's working its way through and it's refreshing. So as I get analysis coming in from maybe different marketing campaigns, I'm able to press play, we're able to get those updates rather than, yep, you can have your next update in a week because I kind of need, I've booked in Friday morning to go and re, re kind of do all of my data preparation. That's not good for anybody. Let's go and build an ETL flow using prep and that SE input, that clean output, into the state that we want it to be and just go and run that whenever we need to or, or schedule it on conductor and fully automate it. 
and also business analysts. So a very particular role here where they never work on just one particular data source. By a business analyst, I mean the kind of process improvement teams where they'll dive in, look at a system or a process and understand using data, how they can actually go and make savings in terms of time, effort, cost, all of those good things. I've always seen business analysts use data really well. I've also seen business analysts really bash their head against a brick wall with taking all of those different data sources, splicing together really cleanly. It's not an easy job, but actually we could actually make that part of the job easier because then they can really use their skills and their experience on actually making those savings that they're there to do. And also kind of, as I mentioned, found that I can spin my screen around and talk to people about what I'm finding within prep, within the data as I'm working my way through it. Business analysts need to do that. They're not necessarily the expert in that particular field, in that particular system. Um, that it's often more of a generic skill than that. So having that chance to to use prep to show to show what's going on. If anybody has used prep, you'll know that you can cl right click on most of the tools and create a preview and desktop really quickly. Again, we can go and kind of update that analysis super quickly, and that's really powerful for a business analyst to be able to do. And also kind of iterate without having to kind of preview and go and test something. You know, that iterative nature of the tool works perfectly for someone who wants to test ideas and logic and as they're pulling in different data sources together. So that's three specific roles. That is nowhere near a definitive list. There are lots of others out there. It's just as I look back through my experience with the teams that I've sat alongside over my years of consulting and managing and working with different teams, there's some of the roles I really think that could help. But who might prep actually not be perfect for? Well, actually, they might not be perfect for spatial anal analysts, especially at the moment. So we're seeing spatial functions um, starting to come into the tool. There's certain elements that aren't there. I mentioned that I'm an Ultrix partner. I work for an Ultrix partner as well in the information lab. Ultrix spatial tools are well exceeding preps at the moment, but preps starting to make some interesting kind of um, kind of digs into those areas. Certainly doing trade area analysis and those kind of things. It would be quite tough to do within prep at the moment. And the actual nature and the design of the prep tool, we don't have the ability to go and see that map in the tool. We can preview and desktop really quickly. But if we're working with a data source, we want to go and kind of make a change and see how that's being affected. In terms of spatial data, we want to see that on a map. That's not there yet. The team know that we definitely need to have it there. Um, so if you're really doing a whole load of spatial specific work, maybe prep's not the right tool. If I just have a few spatial functions that I kind of want to save my users from having to do in desktop, we're starting to see those features in the tool. And that's where we could start using prep for that. But yeah, if you're deep doing some really tough spatial analysis, prep is not the right place as of yet. And the same can be said about predictive data science as well. Uh, the team, uh, Dimitri, is, is kind of one of the main instigators as the development team for introducing the, the um, scripting step within prep that allows us to use Python or R as long as um, prep can go and connect to a version of R or Python. So R serve or, or Python itself to be able to go and run a script within prep. So we don't have to, as I mentioned with the spatial stuff, dive out the tool and come back in to be able to go and see those changes. But we don't have a, a wealth of predictive tool that just kind of drag and drop and, and easy to configure. Whether that comes in the future, I don't know. I, I don't get to see those things, but it's certainly if I'm doing a huge amount of heavy predictive science, predictive data science that I'm, I'm not going to prep is not my tool for that you know lots more data scientists that are out there are coding in r and python so maybe that's not the tool they're going to use and also we don't have the ability to kind of do use circular logic or loops at the moment in the way that prep can is configured to run from left to right and and not kind of use loop logic and that iteration within there so actually that's kind of where i would draw the line with prep at the moment at the moment as I mentioned, it develops very quickly. So I'm sure I'm going to look back on this presentation in six months or a year and go, well, I was wrong about that. The dev team certainly got there quick, quicker than I was expecting them to. But there are so many jobs and so many roles where prep would help. And even if you are a specialist or working with predictive data science, 
that ability to do some of those data preparation tasks in a really clean and easy way that's easier to hand over to somebody else or keep maintaining yourself going forwards. I would still be using prep if I'm being honest. Um, so some of those kind of richer features and functionality isn't there yet. So have I persuaded you? Are you starting to think, yeah, I, I'm going to give prep a bit more of a go? Or if you've used it, are you going to do a little bit more within prep? Well, like I say, the Tableau videos are there. Tableau.com forward slash learn. You'll find the videos. Sign up to that free Tableau account if you haven't done already, and you will start getting access to those videos, and you can go and watch those in your own time. Read the book. I wrote it for a reason, I promise. It's certainly, certainly not for the level of royalties you get. It's not enough. Uh, that's not O'Reilly's fault. It's just, you know, it's it's hard making a living. That's probably why most book writers don't dress very well, or very eclectically, should we say. Who knows? Um, but really, I wrote the book for people who are getting started with prep, or have used it a little bit, and kind of want to go and take those skills further. So that is out there. It's live. I know it's available on um, the Indian version of Amazon, but it's available in other places as well. But really, it's all about practice. And I'm going to say about prep and data. So we're just in the process of rebuilding the site a little bit. Some of the, the prepanddata.com site redirects you back to our old blog spot where we still host the challenges. But lots of the how to help articles where I'm writing about the new features, et cetera, that's all on prepanddata.com. So do go and check out those how to posts, but also, also those challenges to go and practice those skills, because that's really where you're then going to have more confidence to go and deploy those skills in your organizations. So thank you. And at that point, I'll kind of hand it back over to Cigar to, to kind of open up for questions and kind of have a bit more of a chat about prep. Thank you. Thank you, Carl, for that. So, so Carl, I think one thing which every customer, and this is one question they ask us, how do you define should a customer use an Alteryx versus a Tableau prep? Oh, I love that question. It's absolutely my favorite. So thank, thank you for asking it because I normally get it on the Q&As. Mm -hmm. um, when you download Ultrix, you get, uh, instead of steps, you have tools. So you get 175 tools. That's really intimidating for users. Um, so one of my secrets in the data school, and I don't normally talk about this in, in um, webinars publicly, but I'll do it today. I'll show them the interface of Ultrix. And then I don't teach them anything. I'll say, cool, here's a challenge, go. And everybody looks at me like, uh, you're going to teach us how to do this, right? And I'm like, nope, this is over to you. I want you to learn what it's like to pick up one of these tools, whether it's Tableau or whether it's Alteryx, and just get stuck in and see how you go with it. And uh, I've had people who have been like, oh, my God, I'm terrible at this job. I can't do anything. This is really hard. And it is. It is really hard because how do you start with the kind of data preparation logic? let alone which one of these 175 tools do I need to use for each job? And am I using the right one for the right purpose? That's quite tough. As, as easy as Alteryx is as a drag and drop tool, perhaps lower that barrier to entry because they've gone, we're not going to do the 175 things right off the bat. We're going to give you seven or eight steps to go and start making your first bits of progress. Then what you have within those tools is kind of some deeper options to go and play with. So Alteryx is great for that kind of more experienced data prep user where they're trying to do deeper work than what we're seeing elsewhere. But with lots of people, they just need some basic data preparation, whether that's aggregation, joins, cleaning, and that will actually get most people along the way. And it also starts to introduce them to the skill set. So that's what I mean by that lowering that barrier to entry piece. That's where prep's great. But there are bits of functionality that is in Alteryx that is just phenomenally well done that we want to kind of keep seeing um, in other tools and, and made available elsewhere. But in the meantime, Alteryx is a great place to do lots of that. So yeah, right tool for the right person, but also if you're newer, I would go with prep first because when I kind of do a quick demo through prep and then say, hey guys, go and try and do these challenges, they make a lot more progress as well. Perfect, thank you, Carl. So, so uh, there is one question from Lakshmi and he's asking, we have got Tableau Prep and Tableau Desktop in our organization. Why can't we just go ahead and embed uh, Tableau Prep inside Tableau Desktop so that it becomes just one tool and we can go ahead and play it around with respect to it? What are what are your thoughts on that? Yeah, that that's the conversation that I had with Francois Argenstadt, so who's the chief development officer at Tableau. Um, it was a tough decision for them to make to go and split this one tool into two. If you think about that data connection window within desktop, there's not a huge space to play there. 
Um, maybe it does come back together over time, especially as kind of the, we see kind of more migration of functionality to the server tools. But for now, as two standalone products, it kind of needed to be two different products to go and get the level of functionality and richness that we need to when we think about a data preparation flow compared to what we see within desktop. So think about complex joins within desktop and the relationship model is definitely part of this. When you connect to a data source in Tableau, it's like, that's the connection. That's the thing that I'm actually connecting to. Where within prep, I'm going to say, I'm going to go and connect this thing. I'm going to go and take it through four or five steps of preparation and then output it ready for desktop. What desktop doesn't have the, the underlying arch architecture and functionality for is to go and kind of take those snapshots along the way. That's one thing that the prep tool actually builds in. And that really makes things a lot easier of kind of going and working through that step by step by step by step by step approach. So that that is really where there is a big difference between how desktop works and how prep works, but also the amount of functionality and features would be kind of tough to go and squeeze into that connection window space that we have within desktop. And, and that kind of that was the really big early reason to go and separate these things out. So yeah, I'm kind of happy that they're two separate tools. And when the creator license came up and kind of allowed access to both tools, that made me really happy. What made me really, really happy was when the tool is now within the server product. So yeah. now that we have that ability to do prep in browser, that's really where we're starting to kind of see that kind of behavior come together. So Lakshmi, you're absolutely right. I, I wanna see these things go and work really nicely alongside each other. Um, and that will help people. But I think at the time when the decision was made to split them out, it was the right decision. And also it's opened up some kind of new options for us as well. Perfect, thank you, Carl. So there is one more question in terms of how Tableau Prep is useful in handling the big data if the number of rows are more than 10 million? Yeah, that, that's a great question. Um, Prep is still having to do quite a lot of stuff on, on your local machine, again, where in browser, um, potentially opens the door to some better things. One of the fundamental pieces of the architecture of Prep is the built-in default sampling. So why you sometimes see an input in prep just take a little while to go and think about and load is because what prep's doing is it's not just looking at the column structure like you would do with a SQL tool, but it's actually looking at the values in those data sets and it's trying to pull together a, uh, a data set that it's actually going to go and show you as a sample that's actually reflective of the, the whole data set. So that's why we kind of see some of those longer load times, but then we were actually working with a sample throughout. When I actually go and run that flow, what we're actually doing is we're working against the whole data set. So perhaps cleverly going, well, actually, let's go and use a representative data sample to let you go and do all the job that you need to. But actually, when you've kind of got all of that logic built, let's go and apply it to that full data set. So that's really that, that kind of architecture of how to think about how do we go and handle those big data sets, whether that's 10 million rows, whether it's the biggest I've ever used is three and a half billion row data set. Um, you know, we don't want to pull that down locally to my laptop. That would be a terrible decision. So actually, let's only pull in a sample, work with that sample, and let's make sure that sample is realistic. So that's where that default algorithm is doing a really good job. And then we can kind of go and run that whole flow. You do have the option within prep if that kind of sample default does uh, does worry you to use the full data set. But again, do you need to use all 10 million rows? I'm guessing probably not for most data sets you're working with. So yeah, great question. Thank you, Carl. And, and Carl, I, I just want to switch gears over here. I want to talk about your Tableau journey, right? So if what was your inspiration and motivation to just go ahead and get started with Tableau, right? And and being a, I think now you are a head coach at data school, right? What is one thing you tell everyone who comes over here, right? In terms of they can go ahead, invest in Tableau and what is one thing they should definitely go ahead and participate, right? In terms of they can increase their knowledge with respect to this tool. Oh, I love that. Big, big question. So, so what's my motivation to get started with Tableau? I'll handle that bit first. Um, it was having a team of 15 people and seeing one, their frustration that we weren't really using their brains. So lots of the team had actually been part of the insurer for longer than I'd been alive. Um, I was very lucky to be on the grad team. I got some great leadership experience and, and I was able to dive in and, and hopefully help that team really well. But when I was looking at what the team was doing, they were spending a lot of time every day manipulating data in the same way every single time, even if they've written macros with an Excel or whatever else, 
they weren't being allowed by uh, kind of the IT guys to go and connect directly to those SQL tables. The, the right tools weren't there, basically. So it just kind of felt like the team were working really hard, doing their best, but inevitably they were making mistakes because it's really hard to kind of, when you're not having to force and turn on your brain every day, not to make mistakes because you're kind of not actively thinking about everything that you're doing. So really we weren't utilizing those folks properly. So I did what any kind of person did back in, in that kind of like late early 20 or 2000s. And that was go and Google <laughs> data visualization. Um, I was finding or data reporting lots of other terms as well. Obviously, I'd like lots of people I had David McCandless's information is beautiful on as a coffee book, because I was obviously interested in data. I was like, how can we do more of this stuff? How, how do we go and get the team to really think about and create great analysis and tell those stories that are in the data, rather than just kind of turn this handle on this data, data prep piece and kind of the producing outputs where it didn't capture and inspire and allow the end user to ask the questions that they wanted to either. And that, that is when I found Tableau. I looked at lots of other tools as well in, in different spaces, but it's really, that's why I came back to Tableau because that was the tool that allowed us to go and connect to data sources. So go and do kind of some of that easy data preparation and just kind of set up a work that wants and go, but it wasn't kind of deep, deep data preparation. We still need some help on that side, but creating those kind of visuals that really allowed my end users to not just go and see the thing that my team had produced, but go and ask their own questions, go and ask their next question, their next question, their next question. And that, that was really rich within there. So that, that's kind of my answer to that first bit of that question of why Tableau, how did I actually um, dive into that? So Gal, can you remind me of the, the other bits of those questions that you want me to cover off? <laughs> my brain is <laughs> fried on a Friday. Yeah, yeah sure, sure, Gal. I, I just want to understand like, what are two or the three things when people join data school, you go ahead and talk about it, right? In terms of what should be their motivation in terms of their education plan over here and how they should go ahead and learn Tableau? Yeah, I, I, that is such a good question. And I'm still amazed at how Andy and the rest of the team managed to get as much training as they did into like a four month chunk that is the training process, as well as the kind of client projects we do along the way to give them the real world, the, the data school consultants, that real world experience that they go through. I think when I step back, the people who really make the bigger steps. I don't necessarily mean become the best, but who really makes those bigger strides are, it is that practicing out in the real world. So whether that is doing a something like Makeover Monday to go and practice how you're going to go and show and tell those visual stories. Taking a data set doesn't have to be produced by Makeover Monday. I, I love personal passion projects. You'll see, and I think kind of on the original invite, that's uh, my Steph Curry view of kind of looking at where he spends time on a court. I love producing my own basketball data sets and, and working with APIs to go and get hold of those. Do that with an Alteryx actually, um, to go and kind of do some of that analysis. It's, it's the thing that intrigues you will feel like a pleasure rather than, oh my God, I have to do this just to develop. So keep going and working on those visualization and those data storytelling tools, uh, skills, sorry. Makeover Monday is a great way to do that. Doing the other end of the spectrum is actually don't forget about the data. It, it is the lifeblood of what you can do in that analysis is the actual data you can pull together. And I think it's the it's the skill of the moment and hence why I kind of titled this partly prep could be part of that next data revolution. Because if we open the door and if we empower people and make people feel confident and comfortable with the analysis or with working with data to get the data ready for their analysis, it makes that analysis easy to form. It allows us to kind of spend more time analyzing the data rather than kind of turning the handle to prepare those data sets in the first place. So it kind of changes the dynamic in terms of how we work with data. I don't know about you, but for me personally, 80% of my time is always spent with preparing the data first and foremost, and then 20% on the analysis. If we can switch that the other way around, that becomes really powerful. Um, and I can kind of see uh, Nabil's comment within, within the chat around kind of, yeah, Tableau says 20% on the data side, 8% on the visualization side, and Power BI is the opposite. I don't think that's true. And for me personally, a lot of more time has always been spent on the data preparation side, especially with some of the sources I've got, because we're going to crazy places that have never been touched before, often to answer those questions. That if you can go and squeeze 
that time spent in data prep down to a minimal amount, you're spending more time on analysis. Uh, despite the world being slightly crazy around us still, I will still say that humans are intelligent and when they go and look at something, they'll go and ask other questions of it. That's the bit of the world that we need to empower more and more. So if we can spend more time on the analytics, we're going to have richer, um, richer pieces of analysis, better decisions being made, less mistakes being made. So yes, go and practice that visual storytelling, but go and complement that by working and practicing on how you can go and produce that, that and prepare data for that analysis faster and faster and with more depth and skill as well. So yeah, prep and data, I'm going to say it. It's why I do it and why I put a lot of time into it is because it re really is a skill that I believe people can make massive strides with if they do it. Perfect. Just one last question, Carl. What is the role of Tableau community in your whole journey of data visualization and storytelling? Oh, it's huge. It, it's kind of almost been my career. It, it's nuts to look back at the five years that I spent at the insurer before I kind of went over uh, to the bank and kind of did about four months work in, in, in a couple of different divisions of the bank before I kind of set, um, ended up meeting uh, Peter Jokes and, and kind of diving into the Tableau world with both feet. I can't describe how much I've improved from those early days of even running the team, doing the work we were trying to do, getting frustrated by it as well, not going to lie. Um, all the way through to what I'm able to do now. If I look at the likes of Joe Maker and Jonathan Drumney and the amount of time and effort they, they put into helping and supporting other people, me included within the community in the early days, is, is big. Looking at the role that Andy Kreebles played in just the sheer volume of, he's done over a thousand blog posts now, the hours of videos that he produces. But it's not just it's not just them. It, it is really a wider community. And I mentioned some of the names a little bit earlier in terms of Lorna and Jackson, Ryan Sleeper, Ben Jones, Joel Laurie. The list is kind of almost endless of the people that I can still think back to their blog post now that taught me how to do some of the stuff originally. But if we didn't have that. I think we'd all be in a worse place and we wouldn't be producing the quality of content that is making people think about data, is making it seem fun as well as a, a task. But when I started using data, my team literally used to be the team that's that over in the corner that nobody ever went to speak to because data was boring. When I go and talk about data now, people are like, oh, cool, that must be really interesting. Like data is such a great place to be. That's only 10 years. <laughs> that's absolutely insane that I was about 15 years now. But that 10 to 15 year change from data being the thing that nobody wanted to touch to be the thing that actually everybody knows that they need and, and need to keep working on it's been huge and it's actually part of uh, the new book that i'm going to write communicating with data uh, with o'reilly is about how do we go and get lots of people have started to make that move about 10 percent in the organization that's really that 90 percent of people who who don't have those data skills haven't started doing the stuff that we're doing in tableau haven't found these communities that have helped them go and grow and develop how do we go and help all of the rest of everybody else and, and that's going to be a really interesting, oh, finding it really interesting to write. But it, it's that piece where I want to go and, and help more people find things like the Tableau community. And, and for me, the Tableau community is still the best one out there, the richest out there in terms of the development, the thought process, the level of willingness to support and help others. It's just phenomenal. So I can't say enough. I certainly wouldn't have the job now. The information lab as an organization probably wouldn't exist. And when we looked at blog posts recently across the whole world, as a core, we produce so much compared to, to kind of loads of other folks out there. Just even shipping out that level of knowledge into the, into the marketplace for free is just amazing. Um, so I could keep naming, <laughs> naming names for a very long time. Um, I've been part of the community for a long time now, but it, it's just amazing to see. And uh, everybody, please contribute because actually hearing something from your own perspective, using your words rather than my words, is so much richer for other people who are listening in as well. Um, so this ecosystem only gets better if we get more diversity and, and kind of different people bringing different voices to the table. So, yeah, please keep chipping in. If you fear someone said it already, don't worry about it. <laughs> Go and say it in your own words and, and it will definitely help somebody. Um, I'm sure. And, you know, keep running webinars 
and keep running networks like this connect because it really does allow other people to come and come and join the conversations and see different parts of it and allows people like me just to kind of come along and, and share my thoughts as well so thank you to cigar on the team for for opening the door to me but also let's keep these things going as well because that, that makes a massive difference to everybody so yeah no i can't say enough about the community as a whole Thank you. Thank you, Carl. With that, I think it was an honor to have you on Visconnect. Thank you for sharing all your inspiration and motivation about data preparation, data visualization, and storytelling. And wish you all the best for your new book. We are all eager to go ahead and read it. So yeah, all the best for that. I'm, I'm eager to write it. I've still got two thirds to go, and it needs to be done by the summer. <laughs> so I'm a little <laughs> bit nervous right now. But um, yeah, in, in the meantime, still focusing on prep quite a lot. But thank you very much, everybody who's dialed in. I, I know it's a Friday. You've all had long weeks, um, I'm sure. So thank you for taking some time out to listen to me. And um, yeah, go and play with Tableau Prep. I think you'll be surprised. <laughs> and obviously, I'll show off the t-shirt. Prep and data. There you go. It's it's um it's going to help you along the way too. And I'm always happy to take in challenges from other people as well. So if you've got a challenge that you want to to open the doors to for prep and data, uh, Tom Prowse, Jenny Martin, myself, we're always happy to listen to them. Get in contact with us. We'd love to hear from you. Perfect. So with that, thank you everyone for joining. Wish you a great weekend ahead. Be safe. Take care. And we'll see you soon. Thank you. Thanks, cool. Carl. Take care. Thank you, everyone. Cheers. Bye. Bye.